Welcome back to Newegg TV. I'm Kerry Holzman, and I have a question for you. Does your motherboard have one of these? Joining us in studio today from ASUS, we have JJ. Welcome, JJ. Thank you for having me. This is a really cool looking motherboard we have here. What is it? This is our Maximus 8 Extreme. So this pretty much represents our flagship, or essentially the top of the line when it comes to the Republic of the Gamer series of motherboards. Um, with ROG, really kind of the goal is to be able to design the best of the best when it comes to boards that are purpose built for gamers, for overclockers, for DIY enthusiasts that really kind of want no compromise in terms of the features and the functions. Um, and that's pretty much what we have here with the Extreme. It, it definitely uh, has everything in its name when we talk about it being extreme in terms of what's going to be bringing to the table. Who's the ideal candidate for purchasing a motherboard that's extreme? Um, you know, it really actually runs quite a gamut in terms of the different types of users that are out there. We have everything from really the kind of the hardcore gaming enthusiasts that are looking for multiple GPU configurations, that are looking to heavily overclock their systems, but we also have users that actually run their system 100% at stock, but they're really looking for the absolute best of the best, as well as sometimes the specialized accessories, and of course even the aesthetic that the ROG, table, uh, ROG motherboards bring to the table. JJ, you know, ASUS has a great reputation in the tech community. What makes the boards, the build quality, so far superior with ASUS products? In terms of the overall design, it's really something that we are very painstakingly uh, taken into consideration. You know, we go through a lot of validation in terms of stability, component validation. Um, we go through stress testing environments. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we go through and, and really subtle design characteristics in terms of evaluating all the forms of connection, making sure tolerances are extremely high, interoperability and compatibility is extremely high. But when it comes to ROG, you, uh, you're already getting essentially the great quality that you get with any AC series board, but it's about improving that, taking it even further. And so really one of the most immediate areas you're going to have that in is going to be in the onboard component quality. So things like the capacitors, um, the uh, VRM components, things like the inductors or what are called the power phases or the uh, power stages or the MOSFETs, those are all been considerably improved upon to be able to provide higher performance uh, with better efficiency, lower operating temperatures uh, and overall higher tolerances. Um, beyond that also when we talk about the build quality, these boards receive the most heavy attention from our R&D team in terms of really trying to maximize every single iota of performance that we have available to us. We really look to kind of elevate the build quality even beyond what we're known for with our traditional boards. What are some of the features that can be found on the Maximus 8 Extreme? Um, there's actually quite a number of them, but I think first and foremost, especially with a name like the Extreme, is going to be our, our five-way optimization technology, which there's two features that users really, really care about within those, and they're going to be overclocking and fan controls. But first and foremost, let's talk a bit about overclocking. Uh, with a board like this, we've really kind of spent a huge amount of time and effort to be able to provide an outstanding overclocking experience. And when it comes to overclocking, there's really kind of two forms of thinking when it comes to how you want to approach it. One is going to be manually, uh, so doing things kind of traditional or the old school way, as some people might phrase it. Uh, going into the UEFI, painstakingly entering in all the parameters, um, and doing all kinds of different types of adjustments and getting everything dialed in. Um, and that's 100% possible, and on this board we're going to give you more granular control that you could possibly utilize. I would, I would refer to that as traditional overclocking. Yep. Uh, th th there's another way? Yes, uh, there's definitely another way. And actually for this generation, it's a first for ROG series motherboards where we've gone ahead and introduced our auto-tuning technology. Um, so with auto-tuning, it brings over our automated or essentially automatic overclocking that we've had now for a number of years on our mainstream series of motherboards. Um, it's it's an extremely robust and tried and true solution. And the great thing is that while we talk about automated or software-based overclock, this is actually a hardware-based overclock. And what makes it so impressive is that it's specific to your CPU's margin and your cooling solution. You essentially will incrementally increase the frequency, increase voltage in a dynamic way so that in, when the CPU even comes down, it drops down the voltage. All that's available to you and you can go ahead and customize it and even will stress test it in real time. And, and the customization is quite impressive. You can even define targets of how you want it to pursue your overclock. We're really excited to be able to now bring this over to our enthusiast base to be able to give them the best of both worlds when it comes to being able to overclock on their boards. So I'm going to guess that this little box right here has something to do with what you just mentioned about overclocking. This is actually the OC panel. It's our second generation design. Um, so it can work in two fashions and one it can connect directly to the board to allow you to go ahead and in real time be able to make adjustments to your clock speeds, to your voltages. Um, this is all done on a hardware level. So this is great for people that do bench top testing or maybe they're testing their board outside of a chassis. Plus you can do things like advanced uh, temp probe monitoring on there. If you slide the actual panel down, you even have additional fan headers. You've got all kinds of stuff going on on this guy. But for more traditional 
traditional users like ourselves, I think, um, that are normal enthusiasts, it actually also comes with this five and a quarter bay adapter. And so what that actually allows you to do is you can exactly adjust the display like that, and then you can go ahead and mount it directly into your chassis. And so then you'll have a nice readout right in the front of your chassis to be able to give you things like your temperature, your CPU frequency, if you want to be able to make one touch adjustments to your clock speed, or also be able to adjust your fan speeds, so you can do that all. And that comes bundled with the Extreme Board. This seems like it would make overclocking really, really easy. It does. It makes it exceedingly simple. You know, there's the old expression, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. And that couldn't be more true in the world of computers. For example, this board comes with LAN and Wi-Fi, but it's not the same as any old board with LAN and Wi-Fi. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, with the Extreme and pretty much with any ASU series board, we're, our goal is really to always offer something more than what the expectation or the industry standard is. Uh, with the RG series board, that's even set to a higher level. So, uh, one, yes, we've got Intel Gigabit Ethernet, which is fantastic. Uh, Intel, and in our based in our testing and analysis, has the best UDP performance, which is extremely important for online games and also for the enthusiasts out there that like to make a lot of adjustment parameters. Um, the Intel Pro Set is extremely rich at being able to customize and tailor it to your specific network-centric environment. Um, now, when we get to Wi-Fi, uh, we've really stepped things up. On this board, we step up to 3 by 3 base Wi-Fi, which might be in the range of maybe four to even five times the throughput of what you might get on a 10100 Ethernet cable. So extremely fast, high-performance wireless solution. But we've even looked at how can we improve uh, the quality and uh, the overall reliability of your network connection with the jack itself. So we've implemented what we call our land guard design. For this generation, it's all done through what's called surface-mounted technology, so SMT-based design. This allows us to be able to increase the precision and accuracy of the production, and we're able to fit additional items onto uh, the actual jack itself, the, the, the assembly, and this helps to improve uh, performance in terms of surge tolerance as well as ESD tolerance. And then you tie that all together by incorporating our packet priority control software, which allows you to go ahead and prioritize for music, movies, or games, uh, or downloads, or whatever you might be doing when it comes to your network connections, whether it's on the Wi-Fi or the hardline, and we've got you covered when it comes to networking. What have you guys done to offer extreme audio on your extreme board? Uh, well, audio has been an area that we've always focused on in ROG, uh, especially when it comes to our motherboard. So we continue to maintain our full audio isolation. We've got a high-quality codec that's fully shielded. Um, but for this generation, we worked with ESS, who is um, an extremely respected uh, manufacturer of audio chips. And so we've got that ESS DAC that's built on there. That works in concert with the codec. And then we've also got a high-performance operational amplifier on there, which is great to be able to provide a superior driving strength to headphones. And we've even incorporated um, other improvements, such as our depop filter to mitigate uh, any type of popping that might occur when you restart your system. And there's even still the inclusion of what we call our Sonic Sense amp. Um, this is a really nice feature that we offer to users that um, normally they might not know what's called the impedance on their headphone, and they might not know that they have to s manually set it to a different output strength so that that actually um, headphone could be driven properly. And so we've helped to resolve this uh, essentially with some intelligent design on here so that when you connect this, it'll automatically detect the headphone impedance for you and set it so that you can go ahead and get the best experience for your connected headphones. So we've tried to look at the entire solution, not only just from a hardware design, but also even from software. There's a completely redesigned software suite in here that allows users to customize uh, to their heart's content when it comes to their music, movies, and games to be able to get the best experience and really get a great audio experience. Well, when we talk about overclocking, and we obviously have to cover the subject of heat. And one of the things that's frustrating to me as a system builder is when I have more fans than I have fan headers on the board. And this board <laughs> doesn't fall short of having a lot of fan headers. No, correct. So um, every single one of the fan headers you're going to see on this board, so you got seven in total, are all going to first and foremost be able to fully support both DC and PWM, or three pin and four pin control. So that means it doesn't matter what type of fan you get, you're going to be able to go ahead and control that. You could actually get PWM fan splitter cables to attach to any one of those headers. So what that means is essentially you could actually have multiple fans connected to each header, but have those fans be powered by the power supply. I can put multiple fans on the same fan header and the, f the BIOS will still control those fans, but they'll just all control the same speed. In other words, Correct. You, won't, you, can't, you don't have you the individual have granularity, but if you've got three front fans, let's say. You want those all paired, essentially having those have the same control signal. But that will be uniquely uh, controllable per every single header. Now, when we talk about somebody who's going to purchase a board like this, they're probably going to have a liquid cooling solution. What has the Extreme uh, featured to accommodate that? 
Well, actually new for this entire range of Z170 series motherboards, uh, even from our entry-level Dash A SKU, um, including this board, they have a dedicated water pump header. I mean, rounding the things out there as well is that I think the control and the flexibility you're going to have in terms of not only the software, but also within uh, the BIOS or the UEFI, you're going to be able to do all of this. And every single one of these fans also will be able to be fully calibrated. And once that's all been set, uh, you can use one-touch profiles like Silent Profile to have the fans all cut off when you're just surfing the net. And you can even control things like the actual uh, ramping speed. When it comes to the overall fan control flexibility and functionality, the Extreme is truly extreme in terms of what's offered to you. But wait, there's actually more. So what we've got right here is actually the fan extension card. So this is where things I think even get even more interesting. And it connects via a dedicated header that we have on the board. This actually gives you three additional fan headers, or four if you actually want to use, like, use this like a PWM extension board. But where I think even things get more interesting here is that there's also temperature input sources. So what you have the ability here is that you can go ahead and uh, attach the included uh, temp sensors to this board and map those to different points in your chassis. And any one of the fan headers that's either on this board or also on the motherboard can now respond to that temperature input source. Um, so it overall just gives you a huge amount of granularity and flexibility and it's awesome that this actually comes included with the board. And then using the temperature sensors then, you can localize the speed of that fan based on the heat that's near that fan. Correct. Uh, essentially that fan would respond to that temperature input source. Now here on the side of the Maximus 8 Extreme, I see there are eight SATA ports. I also see SATA Express. Why? Yeah, so that's actually a good question. Uh, when it comes to SATA Express, there's a lot of people that have been asking about it because right now you don't have any SATA Express drives. Um, but what we've actually gone ahead and done is uh, thought about some creative solutions to be able to leverage the bandwidth that SATA Express provides. Um, and what we essentially did is that there's no standardized USB 3.1 connection uh, in terms for a front header. Now you can get USB 3.1, which this actually board does feature. It has USB 3.1, both Type-C and Type-A. Right, now that's going to be on the back on the IO shield. On the back. But if you want it on the front of your case, exactly. good luck. Um, so what we did is we actually developed our own uh, front panels that actually have a specialized connector that interfaces directly to the SAT Express port. And uh, we will offer both a Type-A solution and a Type-C solution. And even the Type-C solution offers USB power delivery. Now there are, of course, even faster connections. And we were talking about this before in terms of not only M.2, but U.2. So for the M.2 and the U.2, of course, those are PCIe Gen 3 by 4 base connections, so you can support the fastest types of drives that are out there. Uh, we've also taken a, a lot of uh, kind of, uh, I'd say, consideration in terms of the layout. With the M.2, you can see that we've tried to really move it away from uh, uh, areas where you're going to have more heat uh, build up. Uh, and of course, if you want to use U.2, that's going to afford you uh, higher capacities than what M.2 offers you right now, all the way up to 1.2 terabytes. And plus, because of its high performance heat sink design, uh, it helps to mitigate any type of thermal throttling. And when we then move over to the back I.O., uh, as we noted, you've got uh, the USB 3.1, but this also is utilizing the latest chipset from Intel, so you have Thunderbolt Gen 3 also on that uh, Type-C interface. So you've pretty much got just about every type of connection that you could want on this board. How many video cards will this board support? Uh, this board uh, does support full Crossfire or SLI configuration, so if you're looking to stack in two GPUs and then still even throw on a high-speed storage device, you're good to go. JJ? You've convinced me the Maximus 8 Extreme is, in fact, the most extreme motherboard I've ever seen. It's actually not. There's something even more extreme. That would be the actual new limited edition Extreme Assembly. Now, right off the bat, I can see the Maximus 8 Extreme Assembly looks different. Yes, uh, this is actually a limited edition board. So the assembly, unlike the traditional Extreme, will actually be only sold in a limited quantity. And uh, to align also with the 10th anniversary, as well as actually uh, a new color identity that we've actually started to implement on some of the different 10th anniversary ROG products. And so this is a uh, plasma copper color scheme. So it has a very distinctive look and feel to it compared to the traditional kind of red and black aesthetic that you would see on RG series motherboards or like the Maximus 8 Extreme. Uh, but it also perfectly complements the actual uh, matrix graphics card that we have. So we have a GTX 980 Ti matrix graphics card, which is also done in this same exact color scheme. So they can perfectly complement each other for guys that are looking for the absolute kind of killer aesthetic builds uh, using the best of the best in terms of components. But the difference isn't just looks. That's correct. Uh, this board actually does bring some additional, uh, I think some really impressive uh, add-ons to the table. So in terms of all the core specifications, pretty much as everything is the same like what we have in terms of the Maximus 8 Extreme. But where things get really special and really interesting is going to be the inclusion of two uh, specific hardware pieces, one in terms of networking and one in terms of audio. So in terms of networking, you can see right here, I've got the 10G ROG Express add-in card. So um, 10G Ethernet is something that's been out there for a little while, but it's really only uh, existed in the professional 
professional space. And so uh, with this type of board, we're really like we're really trying to provide users kind of that next generation level of technologies. And so this is an example of that, the inclusion of this type of card. This one still comes with the same exact network connection, so that Intel gigabit Ethernet on board and the 3x3 at 11 AC Wi-Fi, but you're going to also get this 10G add-in card. Now this box here? So this is where I think get things even more interesting. So we talked about the audio being already very impressive on the Maximus 8 Extreme. And so what our R&D team decided to do is pretty much take uh, those components and move them outboard into a discrete dedicated box that is essentially a DAC and an amplification system in a box. And so this is really designed to be able to really open up the performance characteristics of that ESS DAC and uh, be able to also give you some customization abilities as you could go ahead and adjust uh, the op amps if you want to go ahead and change those out to different types of op amps for different so tonality. So you're saying this isn't just a breakout box? That's correct, yes. This I is a whole sound card in addition to the sound card the motherboard has. That's correct, but it's a sound card that offers a, a, a much higher level of performance. So for users that are very serious and really have made that investment into a much higher quality set of headphones, this is a solution that's really aligned with them. Uh, and you know, you get some nice subtle touches, you know, like the physical knob dial, like being able to granularly adjust your volume, right? Um, those type of things are really nice premium touches that I think those type of users appreciate, uh, especially for the hardware investment that they've made within their headphones. It's impressive to me that as big as ASUS is, that they're still so involved with the community and actually listen to them. No, you're definitely right. I mean, for us, um, that's a huge point of pride for us is that we take that time, we put in that effort to be able to listen to our community because we wouldn't be here without them. Um, you know, uh, really at the end of the day, our goal is to be able to design the products that they're going to ultimately be the most satisfied with. And so that's why we're going to continue to commit ourselves to engaging with that community. And we can see the end results right here on the desk in front of us. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for coming in today and, and explaining to us uh, all the bells, whistles, and features on this new line of motherboards from Asus. As always, thank you for having me. Please remember to click like and subscribe. For more great content, be sure and check out our new video shopping platform at Newegg.tv. I'm Kerry Holzman. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.